When people think of cryptocurrency, the first thing that probably comes to mind is Bitcoin, which back in 2017, 2018, when the Bitcoin bubble was happening, all you really heard on the news was Bitcoin and crypto. It hasn't really gone anywhere and it's still traded pretty heavily, at least on Coinbase. They range around six and a half million dollars worth of Bitcoin during three to 4 p.m with the lowest hours during the day being around 9 a.m. and that's still $2 million in transactions that happen for Bitcoin. With all this continued momentum and transactions going on, should you invest in Bitcoin? Welcome back to the channel, I'm Jacob Fisher and today we're talking about cryptocurrency, something I have not covered on this channel because I'm sure I probably would get something wrong. And I might still get something wrong. Now we're gonna be talking about different currencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple and Dogecoin? No, just kidding, we're not talking about that. However, I am not an investment professional and Bitcoin is certainly a risky investment. So this is for entertainment purposes only. We're going to be getting into what crypto is, how to invest in it, and the potential outlook that crypto has on the entire world. With that said, let's tap the like button and get into it. Let's start off with Bitcoin. Over the past year, it has increased in value by just a bit. It's only been recently when it was sitting around $6,000 per coin or share, whatever coin. We'll go with coin for the rest of the video. Then it moved on up to the $10,000 level and now we're sitting around the $12,000 level per coin of Bitcoin. From a purely technical standpoint, Bitcoin seems to have found some support at the $10,000 level. Only time will tell if it continues to go up, but things are technically looking good for Bitcoin. The same goes for Ethereum, except it's actually been performing better than Bitcoin and better than I thought it would. People might just be realizing the differences in how you would use the two currencies, while Ethereum could be really good for payment processing and making things a lot quicker. Bitcoin is a little bit slower in that regards. Remember that behind this coin, behind this asset that's increasing value, it is an actual currency that you can use to buy goods and services in some places. Litecoin and Ripple are not performing as well as Bitcoin or Ethereum, they're kind of just hanging out. The thing about crypto is that you can kind of consider Bitcoin like an index of sorts. You know how SPY, if the SPY is up, you know the overall stock market is up. Well, if Bitcoin is up, then chances are so will a lot of other coins. Of course, this doesn't hold true with penny stocks. If the stock market is up, penny stocks don't need to be up. But there are also penny stock-ish cryptocurrencies that are based off of kind of pump and dumps, as you can call it. The thing about penny stocks is that if the overall market is up, they have a higher chance for increased momentum during the day. The same can be said for those penny stock cryptos, because if Bitcoin is up, generally you're going to have a lot of people looking at crypto, especially if it's up like a decent amount, like 10% or something then you'll probably see a lot of smaller currencies or cryptos running. But obviously you can't have penny stocks go up when the market goes down. So that's a, that's a whole different topic too. Right, but what is cryptocurrency? How do I use it and where do I invest in it? Now you can invest in it with Robinhood, but you won't actually own these shares or coins or amount of Bitcoin that you purchase through them. Robinhood does it a little bit weird. You might need to use a service like Coinbase to actually claim ownership of the coins where you can then transfer to a digital wallet, which is then much safer than let's say an exchange that it's held on. But how do you use it in your daily life? Can I go out and purchase things with Bitcoin or crypto? Well, yes and no. Some places do accept it, but most places probably don't accept Bitcoin as a currency at least to pay for things. The thing that always made me question why use crypto is that it's so volatile. Let's say Starbucks allows you to pay for your latte with Ethereum. Now that $20 latte is going to fluctuate for the amount of Ethereum you pay based on the amount that Ethereum is worth compared to the dollar. The US dollar doesn't fluctuate as much as crypto, so that $20 bill that you have will generally always be worth $20, except with inflation and you know a couple other things involved with it. But with Ethereum, you would have that fluctuation throughout the day. The dollar though is not a decentralized network. In fact, it's a fiat currency, which means it's backed by the government and we're left to trust them to assign a value to the dollar. 
crypto is based on the fact that it is a decentralized network. Of course, I'm sure you've all heard that, and that it's generally safer to use than just a dollar that might be controlled by the banks. The other thing about crypto is that there is a finite supply for each coin. Now, you've probably seen the articles how we're nearing the end of collecting all the Bitcoin through the mining that they're doing. With the dollar, you can have Jerome Powell out there with the money printer making it go burr, right? Really the way to use Bitcoin or crypto is that we all need to agree on a value of that Bitcoin should be. For example, a Mercedes should cost three Bitcoin while a Toyota should cost one Bitcoin. If we can't all agree on set prices for things, then it's gonna be hard to pay for things using a currency. It also means that we need to adopt crypto in the long term and then other things like what does Bitcoin need to be worth to be used worldwide with the market cap that is. And how does the system keep every transaction safe and more? There's a lot that goes into cryptocurrencies. But wait, there is a bit more that I'm going to get into in this video and it doesn't need to be regarding currency. You can use the blockchain for so much more. I think the biggest advantage of the blockchain is not cryptocurrency, but the other ways that you can use it. When you make a transaction with Bitcoin, it has a set code for the transaction that anyone on the network can look up and confirm that that is in fact a transaction. Defrauding an entire blockchain network is especially difficult because of all the checks that goes and because it's a decentralized network, meaning it doesn't need to be stored in a single place, you can have multiple people checking it decentralized. I'm not even sure I fully understand what that means, but here I am. If you think really big about the blockchain, and I mean really big, identity theft is not a joke, Jim. But can the blockchain help with storing people's identities? IBM seems to think that the blockchain can be very helpful in storing people's identities. I'll try to sum up this video really quickly, but because our identities, things like credit cards, ID cards, and stuff like that are all stored on central networks, it's a lot easier for a hacker to get in there and take your identity. While if it was on a decentralized network, it would be especially difficult for that hacker to come in and take all of your information, which I think is one of the greatest potentials that the blockchain has. Again, check that video out below and hopefully you can get a good glimpse from what IBM is trying to do. Now let's think a little bit on a smaller scale, but still an innovative way of thinking. The US voting system is flawed. I think we all know that. And back in 2016, we had that whole thing about voter fraud and hackers coming in to change the votes. Had the votes been using blockchain technology, they could have been encrypted and confirmed with the voter that they in fact did vote for the person that they said they did. There are a ton of options out there that use the blockchain that don't involve a currency, which again, I think is one of the best ways to consider the blockchain. Having a decentralized currency would allow for more checks and security, but before we get there, I think we need to use the blockchain in our everyday lives to get people with used to the idea that we're using a blockchain network and not a centralized system. Let me know down in the comments what you think of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and blockchain and all the technologies that are behind this. And let me know if I've explained this completely wrong. I think I might have done a good job, but you never know. I upload videos on Monday, Wednesday and Friday on travel and finance. If that sounds like something interesting to you, make sure you subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.